quite a year for me as well, um, being the head coach of Novak Djokovic. Uh, before I arrived already, one of the best players of all time. So the, the pressure was there, the challenge was there. Uh, is he going to get better? Is he going to win another Grand Slam? Is he going to come back to number one? Well, 12 months later, we're all a bit smarter. Uh, we had some challenges. Uh, we had some you know, op oppositions. We had some tough losses, but we have a Wimbledon Championship under our belt. We have the world number ranking back. And I believe the last six, seven months, we really blossomed in our relationship. The beginning was tough. Uh, you know, I say we, because I feel very much when Novak is playing, that I'm playing. I'm so passionate about it. So we lost at the Australian Open in the quarterfinal, where he's won three times in a row. So it was quite a difficult start also uh, to, you know, for, for a coach. But uh, he lost in five sets to Wawrinka, who happened to win a tournament. Uh, against Nadal in the final. So, uh, in hindsight, again, it wasn't it wasn't a journeyman we lost to. He was the number four, number three player in the world. And then the season went through. Uh, he had a very very good hard court season, winning Indian Wells and winning uh, Miami. Um, having having said that, I couldn't do my job without Marian Veda, his longtime coach. He's my closest ally. He knows everything about Novak. And before every match that Novak plays. Marianne and myself, we speak to one another, either we're on the same same court and the same site, or when one of us is not there, we give each other, you know, a call, there's there's FaceTime, there's email. So so this is a real team effort uh, that, that we're working for. And he has a great conditioning coach, uh, called Gigi, and he's a great, great physio. Uh, uh, so it's a whole team effort that, that makes Novak strong, and I think that's one of his secrets about it. He wants to get better, he's a student of the game, he wants to be part of the history of the sport and, and winning, you know, when we started winning six Grand Slams wasn't good enough for him. Uh, most other players say, well, he's won over 50 million dollars in prize money and has won so many Grand Slams already. Why bother? Where's the motivation come? But he's really, he's, he, he comes from within, he's a, he's a real sportsman, he's driven, he wants to get better, he wants to win a lot more than he has and therefore I'm, I'm part of the team. But it was almost a the, the scene of, of, of the year where uh, you had those super coaches, as they called us, uh, all of a sudden reappearing on, on, on Wimbledon Center Court. On, you have Roger Federer giving Stefan Edberg a call. You're having Marin Cilic working with Goran Ivanisevic already for a while. You have Nikkei Nishikori working with Michael Jang, also one of my, my rivals back in the day. So it, it seems to be the trend that the former number ones or former Grand Slam champions uh, back into the sport, giving their expertise, their experience, their knowledge back to the, the top players of today. And I think it adds to the quality of tennis. I think the quality is altogether better. I think the, the top is closer. There isn't just one player or two players, there are a couple of players who have the chance of winning Grand Slams and being, you know, being, being ranked high in the world rankings. And I think it's because of this, this new group of, of coaches that, that improved the game.